nieces and nephews welcome back to auntie knows kitchen and to all of my new subscribers current current subscribers thank you all for your love and support to me and my daughter and my channel i really appreciate everything i appreciate all the love and support the comments i'm looking at them i wish i could give each one a individual heart but they come so many so uh thank you thank you thank you um today is a good day so far uh and it's going to be a good day okay let's claim that all right today i'm going to be making my occasion creamy pasta and yes it's diabetic friendly to me so um give me a mom gonna do a flip and a swip or well, swip and a flip whatever you, you can make it for your family your friends you know auntie say also or keep it to yourself all right so give me a mom and i'm gonna get started okay i've already cooked my pasta now i'm using whole grain wheat pasta that's why i say it, it's more diabetic friendly because it's whole grain um and opposed to the white pasta um for you know me i'm talking about me i'm nobody's doctor i'm talking about me um okay this is four thinly sliced chicken breasts as you can see they're very that's thin i purchased them like this i didn't butterfly them myself um they they were already cut like this and they came four to a pack they were like five dollars okay so this is what i have okay i have this is um two tablespoons of the uh this tony cachararo creole seasoning y'all see i did everything i have two tablespoons of creole seasoning i have two tablespoons of garlic powder two tablespoons of onion powder uh, oh, I'm sorry. This is my Creole seasoning. It's two tablespoons. And this is my two tablespoons of paprika. I have one tablespoon of dried parsley. And I have one tablespoon of dried thyme. Okay? Look at that. That's the Creole seasoning. Two tablespoons. Two tablespoons of garlic, pow garlic powder. Two tablespoons of onion powder. One tablespoon of dried parsley. Two tablespoons of paprika this is non-smoked paprika i don't like smoked paprika and this is one tablespoon of dry thyme so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna get all this a uh, mixy mixy get it all mixed up real good i'm using my finger forks get all that all nice and goody 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 gun drop okay goody goody gun drop get all this all mixed up together And what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this and rub it out, make sure it, that my uh, chicken breasts get well coated with this. So this is all my goodness right here. I'm going to make sure all my chicken breasts, and I'm about to sneeze. Get all, <coughs> you know what it is, is it because this stuff is so. I know I sneeze like a rat, okay? I got flack all my life for that. Let make sure all this goodness is in here on these chicken breasts. You see that? See that? See that good seasoning on here? This is what you're looking for. That nice. And a lot of people think chicken breasts is dry, but I'm going to tell you how you keep your chicken breasts moist. You. If you know you're going to be using some chicken breasts, brine them overnight, okay, in some water with a little bit of apple juice. If you don't have apple juice, you use the apple cider vinegar. That'll help add some moisture to them, okay? But that's how, if I know I'm going to be cooking some chicken breasts the next day, I brine them or I can take them out. You know, if you throw them out, you can brine them for an hour and that just a simple solution to help add some moisture to them. Okay, these are all nice and seasoned. Mm-hmm. See that? Get your rub you on the bottom. Get you some of this goodness. Yeah, baby. 
Yum, 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 yum. Get some of that goodness over there. So I'm going to put these to the side. And now, throw a little housekeeping over there. A little housekeeping. A little housekeeping over there. All right. Now we are going to, let's get some cooking done. All right, we're going to add some oil. This is regular vegetable oil. I'm not cooking these in my olive oil because I need a high content. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, got my oil going. Throw that low there, little housekeeper. I'm gonna put my chicken breast down. And you're gonna hear that sizzle. Woo, baby. Give that little sizzle. And I'm glad this is a large pan, so you know that works out perfect. Get this last one in, and I will be cooking these. Get some of that goodness off of this spatula, and I'm gonna turn my heat up a little. Throw this over there for a little housekeeping. Okay, I'm gonna put this here. A little housekeeping. And I'm gonna brown these and I'll be back. Uh, very important nieces and nephews, make sure your chicken is done. Cause I'm gonna tell you, I went to a restaurant. It's been years and years and years. It was right when me and my husband first met. And it was his birthday and I went to a restaurant and I ordered a grilled chicken Caesar salad. I ate it. I ended up with very bad food poisoning. At 105 temperature. And they say it came from a bacteria that's found in undercooked chicken. I was so sick. I was so sick. So, you know, that, that was the worst experience. Always make sure your chicken is all the way cooked. Don't do that. Make sure that chicken is all the way cooked. You just can't look at it and think because of that color. Okay? Okay, I'm going to flip it on the other side. Now I have a meat thermometer. And this spatula, because it did come in contact with that raw side, I'm going to wash this. Okay? So fresh and so clean, clean. So, cooking the other side now. Okay, we're going to check some temperatures. Now, when you're checking your meat, always go into the thickest part of your meat. See, this is, this is uh, 148, so it's not done. This is done, so this should be 165. That one's done. Bring my temperature down. Then I'll go back in. That's done. Because that piece right there, that big hump, that is not done. So I'm going to move this over here to the thickest part. Now you don't want to overcook your breast because you will, despite brining, if you overcook it, you'll, you'll dry it out. I need to get a bowl. I'm gonna have to walk over there. Okay, I'm still working on this last one. Okay, it's done now. Very important when you're dealing with chicken, guys. Very important. All right, now. You see all this goodness I have in here? I am not going to throw this out because what I need to do, I need to add four tablespoons of butter to this. I need to get that melted down and all this goodness. All that flavor. Look at that flavor. 
melt this butter on down here. All that flavor. Yeah, get all that goodness melted down in here. Mm-hmm. I don't want that big crusty piece of goodness. I don't want that. Melt my butter down in here. That's good enough. Ha <laughs> ha. Now I'm going to take, I have some yellow peppers, orange peppers, some red peppers, and this is a small diced onion. And I'm going to take this. And I'm going to stir this up until my uh, onions and things get a little translucent. Translucent. Okay, clear. Somewhat clear. I'm going to turn my heat up a little bit because I got to bite off. Because I do want to cook my onions. Now, what I like, I like to add a little uh, sun-dried tomatoes. And they're in olive oil. So I, I do like to add, toss those around in there. Throw that over there for a little housekeeping. And I'm going to, mm, that smells good too. Mm, I just realized how good it smells. <laughs> okay, got that all in there. And I'm going to just cook this down and I'll be right back. Guys, I'm telling you, it smells so good. And with those sun dried tomatoes, oh, I'm going to show you what I use. These are the ones I use right here Bella San Lucia. I love these julienne cut sun-dried tomatoes because they have the Italian herbs in them. Oh, this smells so good. And now I have, this is all done. I'm going to take two cups of heavy cream. Get all that goodness out of here. Yeah, that's goodness that I'm leaving behind here. No, can't leave any goodness. I can't throw this for a little housekeeping, so I'm going to place that over there for a little housekeeping. I'm going to stir this up, and I'm going to take one block of softened cream cheese, a half a block rather, uh, eight, it's four ounces. What you do, you can buy a whole block and just uh, throw that over there for a little housekeeping. Because I said it was creamy, didn't I? Didn't I tell y'all it was going to be creamy-licious? And I'm gonna stir this around in here. Now, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and add my black pepper to what I, to your taste. Adding some fresh, the ground black pepper. Now, if you want some spicy, spicy, you can add you some cayenne pepper, add you some crushed red pepper plate, I mean flakes. I'm gonna add my salt. I'm using pink Himalayan salt. Add it to your tasting. And I'm going to stir this because I want to get this cheese all melted. I'm going to get my cream cheese melted and I'll be right back. Oh, continue. Uh, you need to continue, continue, you know, keep stirring this because you don't, this is cream, heavy cream, and you don't want it to burn and you don't want to stick. So keep your fire low. I have mine on number three because you need to keep stirring so it doesn't stick. This is a non-stick pan, so I don't really have to worry about stuff sticking to it. This is a really good non-stick pan. So, but if, do not cook this in a cast iron, okay? No cast iron. We're not frying chicken, okay? And you see, I'm continuous. I'm stirring this till it's nice and melted. Okay, so I'm going to continue to stir this until all that cream cheese is nice and melted. And I'm going to be adding to that one half cup of this. Um, I'm not adding Parmesan. This is one half cup of Italian blend. It's like mozzarella. Mozzarella and um, Asiago. It's like a three or four cheese blend. So I'm just going to continue to stir this and auntie be right back. Okay. Nice. Look how creamy it is. Now I'm going to take one cup of chicken broth. Yep. 
one cup of chicken broth. I know you like, where in the heck did that come from? One cup of chicken broth is added to this. That's all nice and stirry, stirry. Now, I use a 16-ounce box of uh, whole grain pasta. So, I'm going to go ahead and add my pasta in here. And I'm going to get this all nice and stirred around. He ain't getting tired. Nope. One escape. Went to the floor for a little housekeeping. Okay, now I'm going to add, this is a half a cup of that cheese blend. I'm going to add that up. I told y'all, creamylicious, creamylicious. I'm going to melt, throw this all in here. Mmm, yum, yum, yum. Now you can slice your chicken breast on top if you want to, or you can leave it whole. It's totally up to you. And you see that ch cheese? Whew. Now, we're basically done. You can swing some of these veggies out. You got your veggies. You got your starch. Like I said, I consider this diabetic friendly because of the wheat, the uh, whole grain pasta. It's a lot easier, allegedly, on uh, blood sugars, on my blood sugars, it is. Everybody's different. Some people are sensitive to any any grain you know look at that y'all see that uh what's this called uh what they called um fire roasted tomatoes and to be honest i'm tell y'all i really sneak them in <laughs> look at that. all that goodness in there i could add some more cheese but i'm gonna leave it like that nieces and nephews here we are we got a nice nice creamy pasta ooh 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 creamy creamy yum 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 mm, yum 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 got that nice creamy pasta going on we got our succulent chicken breast and i'm going to cut one open for you because i want you to see that this breast is not dry okay hokey dokey does chicken breast if cooked properly will not dry Got to get another plate. Hmm. Hold on. See? I cut a piece of that out. Look at here. You see that juice in there? That chicken is not dry. Look at there. That chicken is not dry. Mm, nom, nom, nom. I can eat that. Well. I'll eat it after they go in my food processor. <laughs> Take too much chewing to get it parade down okay so here it is voila nieces and nephew this is auntie's cajun creamy chicken pasta okay so i hope you make this and thank you for watching it's really easy and simple you don't have to use the whole grain pasta you can use real regular uh white pasta you got all these good veggies in here. You got this nice cream sauce going on here. Yes, it's cheesy. I told you it was going to be cheesy-licious or creamy-licious. So, you know, you serve this up. You know, you got a meal, all right? Thank you guys for uh, hanging out and watching me uh, cook this um, Cajun creamy um, chicken pasta. I hope you make it. It's really, like I say, it's really simple and easy. Um... 
I prefer to use the whole grain pasta. Um, you can use it uh, or the white pasta. And for those of you that do um, battle with uh, diabetic gastroparesis, um, it's not overly spicy. That's why I did not add um, a lot of the high spices. Um, throw it in that food processor and you're good to go. Okay. So till next time, hugs, hearts, and kisses to each of you. I love you guys. Thank you again. Until the next uh, next to the next upload, I will see you guys later. Go be you. Be great being you. Life gives you lemons. Put your best foot forward and try to make lemonade. Okay? Do the best you can. Okay? Love you guys. See you later. Bye.